Hey, welcome back. It is myself, Eric Cornish, and The Rob. Hey, now. Back once again. And uh, I, I think we've, we've talked about, we need a name for this thing. Okay. Um, since, since we are, you know, I think we would both agree we're kind of losers. Oh, uh, yeah, a little yeah. bit. In, in, in our own way. <laughs> um, so, you know what? We are the enhancement talent now. See, it's just a, just a fancier way. I'm saying jobber. Jobber. Losers. We're like the job squad of DJs talking about wrestling. That's it. <laughs> There's probably better web series out there, but you're choosing to watch this one, and we thank you. We appreciate that. Um, not a, a ton of stuff going on. I mean, there is, but there's not in wrestling right now. It seems like uh, as we head toward Elimination Chamber and, and people kind of look past that toward WrestleMania... Uh, not, not a lot going no, on. No, I agree. I think on screen, this is one of the worst roads to WrestleMania that we've had. Yeah, I, I expect it to get better, but we'll, again, I may be expecting Although, too much. Although, you know, the, the behind-the-scenes stuff has been kind of exciting, yeah. you know, as far as the matchmaking <laughs> and who's going to be on the show and stuff like that. Uh, the on-screen stuff has not been enticing me very much. The one thing that, that I do like so far, and let's just discuss this and see what your take on this is, Randy Orton running the gauntlet of his opponents in the Elimination Chamber. So far, the only one of those opponents he's beaten is Christian, and most notably, I think, beating him was this week on SmackDown. He lost to, well, I guess now just Cesaro, no Antonio mm-hmm. in the name anymore, uh, and clean lost cleanly. I think that uh, says a lot about Cesaro's future. This has been the strangest championship run of, like, especially a strong guy that they've they put a lot of time and effort into, Randy Orton. Sure. But it's like he's been scared of, like, the big show. He's been scared of Triple H. He's not been, like, the Randy Orton of old. And I would give this title run an F. I, I don't know. They're not making me want to see him wrestle. Mm-hmm. They're, I'm, I'm not buying him as someone I would fear. You know, I just, I'm not, to me, I'm... It's par for the course for this run, I suppose. I'm okay with a cowardly heel, but we're not used to seeing Randy Orton in that role. Um, we can't really tell. I mean, yeah, he's supposed to be a heel, but then at the same time, you know, we don't know his relationship with Triple H and what. I mean, it is somewhat intriguing, but I think the most intriguing thing was the win with Cesaro. I mean, to me, that's surprising, um, but, I, but I like... I like to see it. I like where Cesaro is going. It's going to take more than one win to get Cesaro to where he needs to be, but it's a great start if yeah. that's where they decide to go. Uh, I had a question for you, Eric sure. Cornish, and I want the, anyone who's going to get the WWE Network to consider this. So I guess about a week from now, it's going to launch, mm-hmm. and you're going to have access to I mean, hundreds of thousands of hours of wrestling. My question to you, sir, is... As far as their their catalog and library goes, nothing new, nothing streaming live. What's the first thing you click on and watch? Um, I, I've th- actually thought about this, and I don't know if it's going to be some stuff that that's going to bring back some nostalgia or stuff I never watched to begin with. Mm-hmm. I know you you've watched most of the WWE stuff because you have it all. Correct. Yeah. Um, but I I think I would either go back to some like early '90s WCW stuff that I haven't seen in forever. Are you talking to refresh my memory? Like, are you talking um, Nitro? Or are you talking pre Nitro? No, I'm, t- I'm talking about the pay per views. Maybe yeah, pre Nitro. Definitely pre Nitro. Okay. Early '90s, like '91, '92. You know, to go back to see some of that stuff where Sting was just coming on and, you know, winning his first title back, you know. So, like, specifically, uh, which TV like program that. or which pay-per-view um, do you think you're going to click on first? You know what? I probably, i tell you, one of the ones that I know has always been, you know, people say the, the, the finish was just so bad and um, is, the, is Halloween Havoc. And I think it was either 90 or 91, I believe, uh, it was Sting versus Sid. Um, they had a really weird ending. There, Barry Windham came in dressed as Sting, but they didn't make it blatantly <laughs> obvious that it was Barry Windham. You know, it was one of those things when you when you cheat, you got to make it obvious that you're cheating. That, that but they didn't knows. really make it obvious because the crowd didn't really. I mean, and the cameras didn't catch him, and it wasn't until Jim Ross went, "That looked like somebody else. That looked like <laughs> Barry Windham." I, you know, um, but that whole pay per view that era was when I was really starting to pay attention to things. So. I, that one stands out to me. Stuff as like one that, I would go and then and watch. other things like ECW. I didn't. I have never seen a single ECW pay per view or the old ECW. You're kidding me. Never. I have all of them. Never. I've never seen that. One. So, uh, oh, you know, I used to watch goodness. the old TV show, but I've never seen an ECW pay per view. Oh, there are some. So, there are some great ones. Yeah, so. Now that they're consistently good. Well, you're from Philly, so that's true. But you know what? I'll be honest with you. And here's kind of a uh, a, a dirty little secret of mine. I watched very few of them live. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say I've seen live, 
Uh, like even on pay-per-view, I would say I've seen maybe four, five, but I have gone back and seen all of them. Wow. Um, and they're a lot of fun. There, there's like, you'll have a hard time finding like a string of two bad matches sure. on any pay-per-view. Like every every match on those things are good and fun to watch. And ECW had a life of its own, which which I liked. I think for me, now I started watching wrestling in 1994. I was 11. My very mm-hmm. first show that I watched as a fan I was not a fan at the beginning. I was a fan of wrestling at the end. Was SummerSlam in 1994. Um, Raw started broadcasting in January of 1993. Mm-hmm. And I've seen the first few Raws, um, but I would probably just start watching Raw from the beginning. I'm a big mark for anything from the Attitude Era, sure. uh, although I've seen them, but I wouldn't mind seeing them again. You know, I want to hear, like, D'Lo Brown's theme song again. You know, I just have, <laughs> I haven't heard it in so long. Or, you know, just like, you know, like we're talking about the Job Squad. Like, sure. just, just the stuff that, you know, I remember watching as a team that, you know, just you don't see. You don't see a lot of D'Lo Brown matches anymore. Um, I'd like yeah, to. That, that, yeah. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be a lot of uh, sitting on the couch and just... It's going through that live I'm not going to lie to you. next week. That's, that's what it's going to be. So uh, the network, yeah, coming soon. Can't wait. There are a lot of big names coming back for it. They say Hogan's going to be there. They oh, say Shawn next, Michaels. Next uh, week's Raw is going to be know, awesome. For Raw, the Undertaker's probably going to be back. So we'll see how that works. Now, uh, we've got our first uh, viewer email here. Which, uh, that's pretty good. That's, <laughs> All right. That's pretty good after only a couple weeks. And uh, some of this is, is for fun. Uh, other other things, you know, we may be able to elaborate on. This is from Ben. Who should we, can we, if you want to send this email? You, yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm the Rob at 1061Evansville.com. And I'm Eric at WKDQ.com. You can tweet us. Uh, we'll put our, you know, Twitter accounts down there too. Uh, and just let us know. If you have any wrestling-related comments or questions, send them to us. Sure. Uh, so this is what Ben says. He says, you and Vince McMahon have had a Freaky Friday uh, slash the hot chick experience. You are now in control of WWE Universe. Here are some things that we have to discuss. So okay. I'll let you go first on this. <laughs> since have, since it technically this. wouldn't wouldn't be incest, would you try to hook up with Stephanie McMahon? Um, I mean, sure. She good look. I mean, I suppose. Hey. I'm telling you now. If I, was, if I was a few years younger? She is in the best shape of her life. She looks I good. think she looks better than ever right now, Stephanie McMahon. Uh, but that unrelated to most of these other things. I mean, I'm okay. happily in a relationship right now, but if, if I wasn't, I would, <laughs> yeah, for sure, if I'm in the backstage with Stephanie all the time. Hey, what's up? Um, I'm not your dad. <laughs> Triple H is now your son-in-law. Is that cool or not cool? I mean, a few years ago it would have been cool. You know, a few years ago he was my favorite. When I was, that Attitude Era, he was my number one, like, favorite at the time. Like, th- there was nothing I got excited for more than a Triple H match. Now he's not the same anymore. Yeah, I I think... He's almost kind of lame. He is the character, the wrestler version of Triple H. You know, and that's why I'm not really excited about seeing him come back if he does come yeah. back to wrestle at WrestleMania. Because you can't be that, you know big and bad guy anymore you know you're the guy in the suit he needs to put a little cowardly heel in his character too I think yeah he, he um, was a fantastic heel maybe the best of all it's time not, it's not the same as Vince McMahon where he's coming, yeah. come strutting down but then you know he's a coward obviously because he's not a wrestler so the king of kings I don't, I don't know how that works but um I, I think it's cool. I think he does have a good mind for the business. I think if anybody's yeah. going to take over, uh, he's not a bad idea. I wish Shane would have stayed around, Shane McMahon, because uh, I think uh, I think he might have shared that vision that his father had, but take it in a, another direction instead of just walking on eggshells and knowing that you're just married into the family, yeah. so be careful, you know. So, I'm with you. Um, but anyway, that's kind of <laughs> speaking of the uh, speaking of the Vince McMahon walk. Would you would you keep the walk? If you were Vince McMahon, would you keep if, his? If you're a heel, yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I think you have you're to. You're fired. Yeah, you, you have, have to. to. Yeah, that's that's part of his character. <laughs> okay, um, let's talk the Undertaker here. WrestleMania. Let's uh, assume. Let's assume this year would be it for the Undertaker. If this was, if we knew this was his last year, his last match, book this year's WrestleMania for the Undertaker. If you know it's his last match, he should he should go out putting somebody over. Uh, you have to ask yourself internally, who's the guy who could benefit most from beating the taker and having that? Uh, you know, and you have to be careful with that because this time last year, a guy like uh, a guy like Ryback would have been a slam dunk. Absolutely. And, but you know, at this point now, it would be kind of like that was a waste. Um, I thought at WrestleMania 21, Randy Orton would have been a good pick. He didn't even need it. Uh, maybe it's a guy like Cesaro or some of the, those you know 
Daniel Bryan might not need it, but guys like that who could really use that bump. But it's stupid to have his, his last match at WrestleMania be a victory, I think. It's wasteful. I agree with you. And I hear a lot of the people that are involved with WWE, a lot of people that are that are in WWE. Jim Ross has said this. A lot of people said nobody wants to see The Undertaker lose at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. They want to keep that streak intact. I disagree 100%, and I've got to think The Undertaker does too, knowing that he's such an old-school guy. So you would think... If it was possible to put somebody over huge, they could they could hang on that fact for yeah. the rest of their career. Right. It's like Jericho saying that he beat Austin and Rock in the same night. Absolutely. So to me, if it was going to be anybody this year, there's there's probably two or three choices. Daniel Bryan, I don't think needs it, but I think how huge would that be? That would be big. Um, and I don't know. Again, I don't think he needs it, but the two people that I think could benefit from it. Roman Reigns would be one, um, but even more so would be the White family. Uh, There's that Bray Wyatt put put Bray Wyatt in That's there not a bad because choice. the connection with their kind of creepy, you know, just just I, I mean I know it's not the same as the Undertaker, but they kind of have this you know this this kind of aura about them that would mesh well with the Undertaker's character out definitely there. no that, that's a good name i didn't think of a guy like roman reigns i'm worried will become like a ryback a year from now and that it would be he won't be as relevant a year from now as, as he is right now mm-hmm. um but i hope he is i mean he's, so, got, he's, finally, he's got all the tools you have fired the entire creative team uh, ah. just in a general general manner where do we go from here what what would you do first? i will as kind of a vague answer i don't want this to come off as like a cheap answer but here's what i would do uh, instead of saying, have this guy do this, have this guy do this, put the belt on this guy, I would, in a, in a sentence, I would let the boys who want to write their own storylines have some input on their storylines. Um, I think that no one knows their character better than them. I think that sometimes they have the best minds in the business and can come up with better angles than the writers who are paid to do so. So I would put more power in the boys' ability to write, okay. the, the workers. All right. I would, uh, I'll take that a step further. I don't know that I would put the whole storyline necessarily in the boys' hands, but definitely their promos, because that's the only way anybody's going to break out mm-hmm. and to become a breakout character. I think in a way, that's how, that's why Ryback failed. That's, that's the reason some of these characters, you know, even Seamus to, to an extent, and Del Rio to an extent, they're all saying the same things because the writers are writing the same things for them. Let them, you know, extend their character and uh, become what Stone Cold became yeah, I don't, naturally. Became I don't, yeah. what The Rock became. I don't want naturally. them to have total control, but have the, let them have more input. Yeah, more input on, uh, on their promos. Um, the next thing I would do, Raw would be two hours, period. It's getting a little no long. No three hours. Um, no, definitely not three hours. And uh, then the next thing you would do, as much em- emphasis as you're putting on social media and people going to social media and putting in their input... <laughs> Take what they say and implement that. <laughs> listen, to <laughs> like, listen to, don't, don't just beat over their heads. Go to the app, go to the app, go to Facebook, go to Twitter, and let us know what's going on. If you're not going to listen, yeah. you need to do that. Uh, I'm not saying that everything they're doing is wrong, but I think they need to perk up their ears just a little bit. If they're going to beat us over the head with it, listen <laughs> to what people are saying there, because that's I, what social media is all about. I wouldn't mind a few less pay-per-views every year. I, that's a good one, too. I, I think we could go down to eight. How about then, a how about a live SmackDown every Thursday night? That's what I would bad. like. Not bad. That That's, helps. Let's go back to the old uh, Saturday night's main event. Maybe why every, not every uh, every quarter? Why not have some of those? I and, agree. And do those live, but make them a big deal, not just like a yeah. little. Like, if you miss it, no big deal. Like make it like a super show. Yeah, because that's where that's where you would set up the big stuff. And while we're at it, I could go for a War Games if you don't mind. Every once in a while. <laughs> and you know what? Bring back the ice cream bars, too. Okay. Uh, but anyway, thank you, Ben. We appreciate that. And uh, there you go. So there's another edition of what is now to be known as the Enhancement Talent. There you go. Hope you liked it.